All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Money Gang Crypto. Appreciate all the subscribers, everyone coming in as well. Today, we're going to talk about a bit of an update of what's been going on in the Hex Pulse Chain ecosystem and then just generally as well, what's been going on in the general markets. What a day we had yesterday. Like you talk about that parabolic movement, that kind of movement that you probably see or have heard of. Like Hex went through that. It used to have these crazy leg up days and then a bit of a drop down and then this massive big leg up. But to see it in real life, to be a part of it, was real interesting. So I know a lot of people are saying, well, we're, we're nowhere near sacrifice price when it comes to PulseX. We've still got so much ways to go in order to really outperform many of the altcoins. To be where we're at in the stage that we're at at the moment, to see these leg ups and to see money being deployed is real interesting. And where that comes from is also another interesting question. Wallets that are associated with the PulseX sacrifice wallet have been deploying funds, but not only that, it, it it creates a snowball effect. So all of this, as there's money being moved around, you, you would have noticed that there was a lot of money that came across onto bridge as people didn't want to miss out on the magic carpet ride or the, the snowball effect of purchasing from a PulseX sacrifice wallet or a, an associated wallet with the sacrifice wallet. And so it's very important to keep that in mind. Now, there are other players in this system. There are other whales. There are people that want to get out. There are, quote unquote, bad actors, individuals who aren't really about this system. They want to extract as much value as possible. And even though there might be some OGs that defend them, at the end of the day, they have been seen to be individuals that don't want to be a part of this system or don't want to be involved with this particular crypto. So they're going to take profits. It's just part of life you know it's part of the cycle of life you have to have individuals come in come out maybe they're a part of it for a season maybe they want to be a part of it for a year two years maybe the circumstances have changed we don't always know but let's just be honest and be un unbiased here there are going to be wallets that are going to sell on the way up so it is what it is it happens let's have a little recap of what happened yesterday so as you guys know, and I, I brought attention to this, Wallet E558, which was associated with the Pulse X Sacrifice Wallet, was deploying 10,000 clips into Pulse X Inc. and PHEX and Pulse X. Now, why was it not deployed onto EHEX? A lot of people kept asking me that because there was the forked version there was that they were buying of HEX. I wasn't 100% sure if it was EHEX at the time. Looked over the wallet, looked over the transactions. There was no eHex bought up. And I think this this wallet, this entity, this individual doesn't like the fact that Lance Parker, the individual who started BankX, became a massive whale pretty much overnight when the gob whale sacrificed for their stable coin. Now, there's a lot of, for those of you who are new, there's a lot of conspiracy or rumor as to why that individual did what it did. And... Maybe it was a, a case where that individual's position wanted to take some profits. Best way to do it would be to just sacrifice for another project. Who knows? There's loads of different rumors as to why that particular wallet got so much hex. You'll remember that it had approximately about 850 million hex. It has now got 750, no, 700 million, excuse me, hex left remaining within the wallet itself. And has put up buy walls around the two, three, four cent mark, I believe. Don't hold me to it. I haven't got the figures in front of me. However, I think it's quite obvious. Bankex has been told to sell their $8 million worth of hex. That is the approximate value at the moment. Well below the 0 0.0122 mark. As they haven't actually provided their 0 0.999 silver backed crap coin stable coin they've been a fake entity they've done a promise they did a sacrifice whereby you should have no expectations i'm starting to get annoyed with that word i really don't like it but no expectation sacrifice for a stable coin backed by silver which hasn't actually been deployed there's been a lot of entities that have made offers there's a lot of entities that have been trying to get that hex into better hands into more reliable hands and that individual has been silent, stonewalled everyone, and decided to put in cells on the way up. Now, people just don't want to give that individual millions of dollars. It's as simple as that. They want to make it as difficult as possible. Why should someone get an easy layup 
when it comes to that particular crypto. And that crypto will be stifled. Richard isn't going to just deploy a bunch of USDC or ETH. He's not going to just do that and give it to an individual who's essentially holding the crypto hostage. Again, the individual can put in those liquidity walls and has done. However, who's going to be the first person to buy it up? A lot of people are going to be like, hey, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend that money to go buy up all of that hex. So that is just going to be a wall that's going to be there. It's bullish because you know where they want to sell at. However, it's annoying. It's, it's a case where you've got two sides who are refusing to comply with each other. There's one side saying, I don't want to give that money away to BankX. The other side of BankX saying, well, I'm not going to just sell it at a loss. I'm not going to sell it well below its value. There's a bit of a conflict right there. Now, let's move on and have a look at what else we were talking about here. So Wallet E558, just to let you know, has still got the USD value of $9.7 million worth of DAI in its wallet, $4.9 million worth of wrapped ETH, and $3.5 million worth of USDC. And finally, $3.4 million worth of USDT remaining in said wallet. And you can see here, guys, on in this wallet section here, this is what's still available for deployment, which is um, a heck of a lot of money still left to be deployed. You, you can imagine only, what, 300K that was put into Pulse, 300K that was put into Ink, 300K that was put into Hex, and 300K that was put into PulseX that was actually deployed. Now, I do find it ironic with this... <laughs> When we expose this particular wallet, I don't even want to use that word exposed, right? Exposed is the is complete wrong word. Because I'm, I'm a person that believes in on-chain data. A lot of you guys come here to watch that. But also, I'm a person that likes the blockchain being so open source and that we have the right, if you want to do some digging, to show and see and look at wallets. And they, those things can be both positive and negative. Right? If someone wants a, a lot more privacy, it's a bit of a negative that someone else on the internet can just go there and, and show those wallets. However, the other side of the equation is when I do these tweets and start talking about this price increase and the money getting moved, another thing that's great for Wales is the fact that there's going to be people that, if, if there's a positive spin on it, there's going to be people that are also going to follow that whale. There's also going to be people who are going to front run and try and sell. The blockchain is available for people to look at they can look at the data, they can put out that data, and anyone complaining about that, you need to question their motives, in my opinion. But that's just my opinion at the end of the day. So there's a lot more that's available. Now, it makes me laugh here. You'll probably see that there is going to be HOC, there's also Teddy Bear. You know, these guys are funny, right? They see the wallet and they send transactions to the wallet itself. What might happen is someone might put out a tweet and go, hey, look at this wallet. It's bought up some of my token. Now, I like Teddy Bear. I like HOC. It just makes me laugh because it's it's something that it's a tactic that's used by a lot of guys who have their own coin or who are promoting another coin who are in the same ecosystem, just pushing it out. So I did find that quite funny. So there's a few few there. PKTTN is another one. RH404 as well. Pytius. <laughs> so you've got a, a, a bit of that going on, which is interesting. And a bit of PDI also in that wallet. I'll show that on screen there. PDI here, Piteous and uh, RH404. Now moving on, let's have a look at this wallet here. So this is wallet 7514. This is actually associated with Rackham's Overwatch group, possibly is Rackham. Major clips yesterday was selling 12k clips, 14 of them in total, plus an additional two $1,200 clips of PulseX. Now a lot of people, I, I had a few comments going, what, what do you mean by clips? Clips is literally just a sell order, right? I just call it clips. It's just something that I say. Those clips were the amount that they're doing. So if I'm doing a 10K clip, I'm selling, selling 10K at a time. That was what was happening. The total value was 170,000 USD value sold on the market. Now, this individual actually has 30 billion uh, PulseX left, which is USD value of about 1.8 mil. That's what's remaining within that particular wallet itself. And also approximately about 800K of USD value, about 400, split 400 each in two pools, a Pulse USDT pool, a Pulse USDC pool. And we'll come onto that wallet real quick and have a little look at that. Here it is 
So you can see here what's remaining, $1.8 million worth of Pulsex. You've then also got here, these are the, the pools here of the Pulse. That is what's being farmed on Pulsex at the moment. And then you've got here your, your 30 billion Pulsex or $1.8 million worth of, of Pulsex, just to save confusion there. So that is the wallet associated with Rackham. Now, what's my personal opinion of Rackham? Some people were talking about it. For those who haven't been in this ecosystem or don't know, Rackham was a big time whale who came into Hex, I believe, early. He also made money outside of crypto. He's got a questionable background. Some people have done some deep diving and, and digging into him as an individual. He had a group called Overwatch Partners that sacrificed heavy. They were the biggest sacrifices for PulseX. And yeah, I mean, he's a questionable guy. He uses a lot of Bible verses in his bio. I've actually been on voice chats, voice calls with him. He had a group chat. So just before Pulse and PulseX launched, so it took about two, two years for it to launch, we were all in a group chat. Myself, um, Haunted, you probably know Haunted from Up and Apex Token, and a, a load of guys really who were in that group chat. Now, he would do these voice chats on a daily basis. I was living in London and we were talking on those voice chats. And he was asking genuine questions and, and talking to the community. He was interacting with the community. Seemed like a, a likable person. He came out on stream saying, hey, everyone needs to be staked. Everyone needs to wait their turn, delay their gratification. And then what happened when PulseX launched? You know, Overwatch partners started selling or wallets associated with, with Overwatch partners started selling. And he disappeared. He, he went off the, the, the face of the map. He had been building in an exchange and he had supposedly investors from Saudi Arabia. I mean, to the point where I remember in one voice chat, we were talking about what gifts he should give uh, individuals from the United Arab Emirates and also from Saudi Arabia. I have extensive knowledge of that. I had a, a previous partner who was from there. So I was giving some advice. I was, I was saying, you know, this is what you should buy. This is... This is a gift that might be good for someone who's like a sheik or, or, or an individual like that. Now, I don't know if that's completely true in terms of the story itself. He seemed a nice enough guy to be able to talk about that and, and talk openly about that. Now, a lot of people relied on him because when you see we have certain biases within our mindset, when you see someone who's very rich and successful, has the backing and the social credibility and social proof from other individuals as a rich investor a guy who's a billionaire who's come from nothing to something famously said that he he was previously homeless and and was in a really dark place then found christ and the, the whole shebang like that bear in mind i'm a christian here guys so a lot of that i find a little bit disingenuous i don't like anyone using uh, their faith as a bit of a crux or as a bit of a sympathy boat but to me it, he seemed okay he seemed all right and then his actions displayed something that was disingenuous don't trust that individual and what they say because their actions they determine exactly what that individual is going to do and so when someone says hey you guys should stake long you guys should delay your gratification don't sell straight away this is going to moon and then they're selling well it's very disingenuous. This is the whole idea behind watching and reading the blockchain and looking at wallets. The whole point of it is to show who's disingenuous and who's not. Because there are a lot of disingenuous individuals who will do one thing and, and say one thing and do another thing. You see a big maxi saying, I'm not going to sell until a 10,000 X. Well, okay, show me your wallets. Show me your data. Why don't you use a domain name service whereby you can associate your name to a particular wallet address and people can see that wallet. You're, you're putting it out into the open. There's only one individual that I know who's done that, that's Gary Woods. He's taken a lot of criticism for it. I personally think it's a very valuable thing because he's a public facing figure, He puts himself out there. He's speaking to Altcoin Daily, for example, last night. So he's a very respected individual and he shows all of his transactions, right? From that particular wallet. Individuals can do that. However, they're quick to say that I'm not gonna do one thing. I'm not gonna sell and yet they're not going to show their on-chain data, they're not going to show their wallets. If you're really about that life, if you're saying that you're about that life, then why don't you put your name out there on a domain name service such as like Pulse Domains or ETH Domain Service? If you liked the video, please like, share and subscribe. There's also the Patreon as well and a Telegram group chat, t.me slash moneygangcultchat. All of the details are in the description below. Appreciate all your time to the next one.